Yeah, good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, welcome to the NCA party press conference. We'll start with introductions. Uh, my name is Madok Chwasa. Uh, I'm the national administrator at the NCA party. And I also speak on behalf of the party. I think the role that most of you know. Uh, I'll give my colleagues here to introduce themselves. Then I will also introduce you to some NCA leaders who are among us yourselves. Okay, my name is Love Momaduku. I am the president of the NCA party. My name is Hilal Mganda. I'm the vice president of the NCA party. Uh, the whole area is in Lampton, that's where I come from. And the NCA is a organization. Okay, thank you. Thank you, President. Thank you, Vice President. Uh, I think among us two, we also noticed that there is uh, Mr. Robert Mutanga, uh, the NCA treasurer. Then uh, uh, there's also Honorable Mulambo, uh, our candidate uh, for Chipinge East. There's also Honorable Mzamiri, our candidate for Kutu Central. So this is a press conference uh, that we uh, called shortly. You understand the reason for for the presser is that uh, we felt that uh, there's a need for us to address the general public in terms of uh, the vehicles that were given uh, political parties who are in Poland. You understand and agree with me that if you go through the media, it will be as if the vehicle was just given to the NCA or to Professor Maduku, our president, is some who choose to misrepresent. So we thought that there's no need for misrepresentation. We need to account to the public. They need to know our position in terms of these vehicles. So this is why we took this press conference very seriously. You heard Vice President came from Plum Tree yesterday. I just came in Arare, coming from Machingo to come for for the press conference. So without taking time, we'll give the president uh, time to address. After his address, we'll take any further questions. So over to you, president. OK, thank you very much, uh, uh, Madam spokesperson. And also thank you, the vice president, Jingan Um I'm going to be addressing the issues that are coming up. We are just responding to recent developments in the country. But I should start on behalf of the NCA to make the point that um, we are living in very difficult times with uh, the third wave and the Delta variant. The NCA has been very, very clear about vaccination. You will know the media. If you go through the media, you'll get pictures of my first jab sometime at the beginning of April this year and my second jab at the end of April this year. We called upon Zimbabweans to embrace vaccination. And we are doing it again now to encourage all our people to go get vaccinated because of the difficulties that we are facing. But I must also quickly say that the campaign and the encouragement for vaccination is not an opportunity for others to discriminate against those that are not yet vaccinated or to create stigmas against those that are not yet vaccinated. We are going to get there. Everyone is going to get there. But let's go together. And we are calling upon all of Zimbabweans to embrace vaccination. That's the first point that I wish to make as I do. And in fact, also congratulate um, the efforts by many, particularly the government, in trying to provide the vaccines that are available. I now want to turn to the purpose of this uh, press conference. The purpose of this press conference is just to do two things. The first thing is to deal with the NCA political party and its views on Poland. So it's an NCA position on Poland. It's not a Poland press conference. It is an NCA press conference to explain why the NCA at this particular point as there is debate believes that Poland is an appropriate 
and useful forum. Pollard was created 2019, the beginning of 2019. The president invited political parties that fielded candidates in the 2018 presidential election. The NCA fielded a candidate in the, in the 2018 presidential election. We accepted the invitation to join Pollard. We are part of Pollard. And we believe, and I must make it clear that as NCA, we believe that Pollard is a useful platform. It is an important platform for this country. It is a way forward for this country. That is the NCA position we are making. Why are we saying that? We are saying so because as NCA, we believe that when an election has been contested, there will always be one winner. It doesn't mean, matter whether that winner is at a wide level as a councillor, or is a winner at a constituent level as a member of parliament, or is a winner as a senator, or a winner as president. There will always be a winner. Because there would have been competition, there will always be losers. Some losers will be very good losers. Others will be very bad losers. But in every election, there are winners and losers. The NCA believes that for any country to progress, whoever wins an election must take office in terms of the constitution. That is the person who would exercise the functions of a councillor or the functions of an MP or the functions of president. But they must, that's our belief as in a party, they must work with their losers. Between an election and the next election, governance must be an affair of those that have won, who are running affairs of state, and working alongside those that have lost elections. And that belief is our belief. We believe that is the way to go. So there must be a Pollard in every ward. So if you win and you're a councillor, in your ward, you are the councillor who is in office. You go to the district or a rural district council, by, or you go to the urban council. But within that ward, you must look out for those that lost elections competing with you. Try to work together. What do I do here? What are your views and so forth? If it is an MP, you have won as an MP, you go to parliament, you will be the one who will be in parliament. But when you get back to your constituency, look out for the losers, those you competed with. Find out how best to develop your, your constituency. And then if it is at a provincial level, we expect that those who are in the MPs in the province, they must look out for the politicians that lost as you go to the next. Similarly, at national level, if you become president, if I become president, I'll work with the losers. If you become president, work with the losers. That's the belief of the NCA, and that is the philosophy of Pollard. We are going to be marketing Pollard to be taken in every country in Southern Africa. So we'll be marketing Pollard. Every country, Botswana must have a Pollard. The president there, must work with the losers. Zambia must have a Pollard. They are having elections next to, next week. The president there must work with the losers. The whole of Africa. This is how Africa would develop. So as NCA, we fully, fully, fully support the philosophy of Pollard. We fully, fully support the approach of Pollard. And we will be in Pollard from now, whatever. If we become the government, we'll work with Poland. Now, those who are detractors, those I call detractors, that want to be governing this country, if they happen to win, we will insist on Poland. I think you are hearing me. If you become president and you are not me, you are not Mnangagwa, and you do not want a Poland, we'll force you to have a Poland in this country. <laughs> Poland is not a Mnangagwa baby. It's a very important way of governing affairs of society. The NCA is clear on that. So I want Zimbabweans and other people and voters to know what this party believes in. This party believes in the fact that governance is an affair of those that have won election and those that have lost elections. That is what governance, and that is what is called good governance. Governance is not about those that win and say, I am on my own and I want to do it on my own. 
we would not. This is why we embraced President Mnangagwa's invitation to get to Poland. Now, Poland has been doing a lot of things that I wish to make clear. Currently, as we sit here, Poland will be coming up with a comprehensive draft bill on electoral reforms that seek to amend the Electoral Act. We had our last meeting in April, the Pollard Principles. And at that last meeting we had in April, we actually had three civic organizations that came to Pollard. We had two full days with these civic organizations. I'll mention their names. The first one is the Zimbabwe Election Support Network, ZESNE. They brought a draft bill. And they will confirm that we went through their draft bill. We agreed with a number of their proposals. We have come up with our own proposals. The second organization that was at that meeting is the ERC, the Election Resource Center. It was with us. We discussed with them and we went. The third organization is a very popular one, the Zimbabwe Lawyers for Human Rights. They were with us for three days. The Zimbabwe Lawyers for Human Rights brought the bill on Section 210 on how we can ensure that we, we actually adopted the bill brought to us by the Zimbabwe Lawyers for Human Rights. And Pollard has been engaging the Minister of Justice at the moment. The public will soon see the bills that will be coming through the Pollard process. Then they have been meeting. Some of you know that the elections, I mean, the uh, economic summit that took place which has so many ideas. Pollard must be credited for the various ideas that have been brought to government in terms of stabilization. We will get a particular Pollard platform that will discuss and outline the Pollard achievements. But let the debate continue. We, we have also did what I can call detoxication, the po point I'm making. Just to make sure that there is not always continuous political polarization. We are very disappointed as a party that there are so many Zimbabweans that still keep wanting to take the country back to a process where you are always, you know, fighting each other, uh, hating each other, you know, hatred and so forth. We are disappointed by that, but we are moving forward. We believe at the end that is. So having said the issues to do with Poland and we believe in Poland, I come to the issue relating to vehicles that um, were given out uh, by Pollard. The vehicles that uh, have been talked about, they are actually Pollard vehicles. That's point number one. Pollard vehicles are government vehicles. They are state vehicles. What we were given was a right to use these vehicles for Pollard purposes and for the work of our political parties. So we don't own personal vehicles. It was to be given a right. It's like a right to occupy a government building. If uh, the government says, well, the NCA can come and, and <coughs> occupy and use these buildings for your office space, that can happen. Or you come and occupy and, and so forth. This is not the first time that uh, government is giving us access to this. These vehicles only have, the only step that has been taken is that it's government property that we will have with us. But we have had access to government property. We have our meetings in government buildings. We have our meetings at state house. We go to meetings that are funded by the state with the hotels that we go to and so forth. But what was happening with the vehicles, I wish I could make the point, was that since February 2019, when the, uh, the Pollard started, up to now, we were using our vehicles to go to Pollard meetings and then we would get fuel coupons. So you'll only get fuel coupons. And so on. The meetings will be held in Blawayo, they'll be held in Mtare, they'll be held all over. We'll be driving. And then the government would give us fuel. But what was missing there was that many of us had, we couldn't afford to continue to have, our vehicles are completely now broken down. If you go around to most of the political parties, because you're using your own vehicles, so they are broken down. You get the government does not give you funding for repairing your vehicles. So that debate was taking place until it became obvious that the best way forward for Poland and what would be cheaper for the people of Zimbabwe, much cheaper for the people of Zimbabwe, is for the Poland principles to use government vehicles. That's what we have.
So you use a government vehicle. Instead of you using your own vehicle, you get fuel, you get, your vehicle gets broken, you cannot replace it, but Poland meetings have to continue. And so, so that was the basis upon which this, this, so the idea that within three years, those vehicles would belong to us, uh, that is simply to do with government policy, government programs, it's not unique to, to Poland. But at the moment, we do not own any vehicles. We're given access to use government vehicles for both Poland and our own work. And we fully welcome that move. And we thank the government and we thank President Mnangagwa for that decision to allow Poland to use. I must not mince my words on that point, that uh, we fully embrace that it is useful for us. Now, I want to address the issue of, so are you then going to be using these government vehicles to build your parties, use these government vehicles? The answer is yes, that uh, we will use the government vehicles to build our parties, and, uh, and that there's nothing wrong with that. And I have brought for the first time a copy of the Constitution of Zimbabwe. Just to make the point which I want to read, and I want to encourage you to do so as well. So um, I, I'm not the first one to come to a press conference with a copy of the Constitution. <laughs> so I'm going to do that, a copy of the Constitution. I'm sure I'm going to follow them and also wave it and say that this is the Constitution of Zimbabwe. I'm going to read Section 67, Subsection 4 of the Constitution of Zimbabwe. So journalists, please take note, Section 67, Subsection 4 of the Constitution of Zimbabwe. It says, for the purpose of promoting multi-party democracy, an act of parliament must provide for the funding of political parties. That's what our constitution says. It says that in subsection 4. Subsection 4 closes all the subsections. It starts with a section that says every Zimbabwean citizen has a right to form, to join, and to participate in the activities of a political party or organization of their choice. Once you exercise that freedom, then the state must fund you. That's what our constitution says. The constitution starts by giving every citizen a right to join or form a party of their choice. Once they form the party of their choice, the next thing is that the state must make a mechanism to fund political parties. Now, the current act, which is in the process of being amended, provides one method of funding political parties. If you participate in an election and you get 5% of the votes, you get funding, which is what is, has been happening for a very long time here. But that is not the only way in which political parties would be funded under our constitution. And this is what I've been hearing people writing uh, and so on, saying, no, you didn't get 5%. You, didn't. you don't have to have 5% to have the right to form or join a political party. It's, it's not us. It's not me. It's the people of Zimbabwe who said, look, each one of us has a right to form, to join, and to participate in the political activities of a party of your choice. Once you exercise that choice, there must be a mechanism. So Pollard is a government program in the sense that the president of the day, who was elected and installed as president, decided that he will work with the losers. We are losers when it comes to the 2018 <laughs> election. <laughs> but we are saying that uh, once you are a loser, that is not the end of the matter. You have an opportunity to work with the winner. I hope I make it clear. That's the NCA philosophy. You are a loser. If you get an opportunity to work with the winner, we will embrace it. We embraced it. Once you work with the winner, it's a government program. And that government program must be funded. Pollard satisfies section 67, subsection 4 of the Constitution, is to promote a multi-party democracy. I want to finally say to all of you and to Zimbabweans, it is deliberate for our Constitution to use the word multi. It says multi-party. I think that's what you hear. The other word is one party. The other one is bi-party. And then there is multi-party. Multi-party, multi means more than two. So you will see that uh, 
our constitution wants us to have more than two political parties. The NCA does not want a situation which we have seen before, where people say that hey, you're either there and then, so that these parties that were there, the dominant political parties, they were winning by default. If you don't want this one, you vote that one. If you don't want this one, you vote that one. That can, that can be a democracy, etc. So just I wanted to explain the point that we believe in Poland, and that Poland is a good thing for the country. We must all promote Poland thinking. Winners must work with losers. That's the point we are making. And this is going to be permanent. We are going to work to make sure that it becomes permanent in the country. That's our philosophy. If I may address some criticism that have come personally to me and personally to the NCA. Some people have said, which is part of what we want to do, they've said that uh, you are selling out. I think that has been said. Uh, you are selling out in receiving a vehicle. One was saying that you, you are selling out because you are receiving a vehicle from Munangago. I think that we made that very clear that Munangago did not hand any vehicle. He doesn't own any vehicle. The vehicles that we have and the vehicles we are using are government vehicles. They are state vehicles. And that we believe that the majority of Zimbabweans support that initiative. Unless anyone carries out a referendum that says that the majority of Zimbabweans say that Poland people must not use government vehicles, then we will listen. But we were not going to be listening to an idea which is simply the opposite. We believe that we are entitled to use these vehicles. We would actually be campaigning uh, for more vehicles for our party. <laughs> uh, and because we, with one vehicle, surely it is not enough because it will be used by the president. I'm the one who will be driving the vehicle, and so the but we would expect not a, a minimum of three vehicles. And so, this is that's the only way we can push through uh, the agenda of ensuring that our party is known everywhere. Now, with that vehicle that I have which I'm using for the NCA, is parked outside. You will see that dog will watch it. <laughs> My next trip is to Gogwe. I'm going to Gogwe in the next three days, a place that I have not been able to visit for the past three years. But there are people in Gogwe who actually want me, who actually support the NCA. I've never interacted with them. I'll go to places. I, I can give you a list of the places where I know there are people that say, look, we want Love Mo Maduku here. But the reason why Love Mo Maduku could not get their votes in 2018 was because Love Mo Maduku never accessed them. And even here, I don't think I'll get zero among you. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I, have, I, have, I have thousands of people out there. I can assure you here that if there's any vehicle that is going to be broken first, it's likely to be mine. Which is why I understand there's a lot of, uh, you know, attacking the sleeper as the only recipient. I, I accept that uh, you focus, the people focus on me. But they will know that I'm going to be using that vehicle. Sooner or later, you will hear people in Togo telling you that we saw Maduku with his uh, Poland vehicle. You will hear people in some corner of the country, in Uganda, telling you that they so love Mo Maduku with the Paul. I'm going to use that vehicle to build the NCA. I am entitled to use that vehicle to build the NCA and to market Poland. Now, imagine me going in every corner of the country saying, look, winners must work with losers. That's our philosophy. And that is why those vehicles are there. Poland wants to spread the message that for Zimbabwe to progress, winners must work with losers. And we need vehicles for that purpose. There was an Afrobarometer survey, which uh, without the vehicles, we were able to get 20 something percent of uh, people saying they support Poland. With the vehicles, 77 percent of the people in the next survey will be telling you that they support Poland. That's the reason for the vehicles. So I think just to, for us to make it clear to you, why these vehicles are there. They are helpful for the country. This country must move to that particular state. So I, I, I cannot be said to have sold out. And if I may just, just wind up, say this. People who say that Love Mo Maduke sold out, I think they were saying it some five, six years ago. First, when in 2013, 
I decided with the NCA that we were going to campaign for a no vote to the constitution. I was told that I had sold out. Because those people were saying I sold out at that time. We're telling people that this is the best constitution ever. This one. I don't believe that. Although I was able to pick clauses there, and from time to time I pick good clauses for my clients <laughs> from this uh, constitution. But uh, they said I sold out because I campaigned for no vote, and I campaigned for a no vote. 5.5% of Zimbabweans followed us and voted no. Then the next time we formed the NCA into a political party, because we were opposed to our colleagues that we thought they definitely sold out. Once in forming an NCA, you have sold out. And so I keep selling out, but somehow they forget. <laughs> when something happens, they forget that I had sold out already. Then they say, yes, sold out. When I became a member of the Montante Commission, seven members in that commission, we went to do some very good work. We made recommendations which people still want to, to, to say that they must be implemented. But in joining the commission, Maduku had sold out. Every step I sell out. And somewhat I continue to sell out. Now, please, let me tell these people. I have taken the vehicle. I'm going to campaign for more vehicles for the NCA. If I have sold out now, I have sold out now. Ngatungo, it a disagree on that platform. And that I'm going to be campaigning for this philosophy. Winners must work with losers. For Africa to develop, winners must work with losers. And Africa will call in its own democracy. The Western world, which has an entrenched democracy, there are other methods there. And you know that winners and losers in the, in, 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 in the West, they work along very well. President Trump left office. He's somewhat enjoying himself in some place in, in, in the United States. You know that. And that uh, he's preparing to come back. That's what we're reading. But there's no animosity that kills that country. But in this country, we have people that believe that... Uh, they must bring down. So this is why we are in Poland, and I think I've made my point uh, clear, and that uh, the NCA is in Poland for the reason that winners must work with losers, and that as NCA, we are going to be spreading that philosophy at the world level, at the constituents level, at the provincial level, and at the national level. You know, if you are a winner somewhere in any of those spaces, look for your losers and work with them to build your world. If you are a winner somewhere, Look for your losers and work with them. Even when you have a church and there are elections in a church and you win as a bishop, work with your losers. <laughs> if you are the chairperson of Dynamos, where I'm sure there are also elections there, I know. If you win, work with your losers to build your, your club. And that, I mean, what is wrong with that, surely, Zimbabweans? What is wrong with that, the world? And but then of course there is some support that is required, and that support comes with vehicles. And I should make clear, as I've said, we want more as NCA, <laughs> more vehicles. And this one, because it's just for the president, we want more vehicles, and that is good because of section 67, subsection four of the constitution. I think I'm done uh, unless there's something that uh yeah, I've talked about Poland reforms, I've talked about the fact that Poland is going to be a good thing we will be decided, and I think I've seen the questions. I also know, I think, let me complete that point. When the elections come in 2023, a voter is entitled to say, this is Love Mo Maduku. He was in Poland. I didn't like Poland. I'm not going to vote for him. They're entitled to do that. But I know that there are voters, and I'm keeping there are voters who are going to say, this is Love Mo Maduku. He was in Poland. He preached the gospel of winners working with losers. He was working with Munangagwa for the four years and, and as a loser. Munangagwa is a winner, but we um, ultimately the winner is one who decides the way at the, at the way forward. They will also vote for me. And that's democracy. And that's democracy. If some people want to gain votes because they are not in Poland, I saw Hopewell Chingono uh, campaigning for Chamis. And that's what he does on his um, uh, whatever Twitter pages and so forth. He is entitled to campaign for Chamis. I'm sure he is also entitled to criticize us, but we know that the game is just politics. 
It's not that he has more love for Zimbabwe. And we've no way. <laughs> no, he was the first one to want to be seen. And it must be very clear. I am love more Maduku. I lead the NCA. I love Zimbabwe. And I believe that Pollard is right. You don't believe that Pollard is right. Campaign for your candidates. And that is correct. But no Zimbabwean must hide behind a social media platform to be more Zimbabwean than others. To be more loving the country than others. We have also gone through a long way, and I believe people who say Maduku did this, he did very well, but now I'm still the same love more Maduku who was left for dead on several occasions. The same love more Maduku of 11 March 2007. The same love more Maduku who worked hard for this country somewhat to have sensitivity that they needed a new constitution. And that is the same love more Maduku who is saying that Poland is a good platform and that winners must work with losers. And in doing so, I love my country. And I think I should also remain, I'm entitled to react as I close emotionally and say that those who think that they love this country more than me, I think they must respect me. I also love this country and I have different views. That's why I've picked on Hopewell. Because I, I am prepared to engage with him further, even if it goes on whatever the outcome of that. I am prepared to engage with Hopewell and say that you do not love this country more than me. Tingato Fanana. But don't tell the world that this one is, uh, is, 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 is treacherous and so forth. I mean, who will have the monopoly to pick on individuals in Zimbabwe and say, these are sellouts, you are not a sellout, we sell sellout. That's not the kind of country that we want. We want to build a politics. We are all part of this country. And I'm going to have that new, we popularized a people-driven constitution. We are going to be popularizing. Winners must work with losers. Thank you very much. Right. Um, thank you, President. Uh, winners must work with losers. So we are now going to take questions. Um, the way we will do it is that uh, if uh, you are the one who wants to ask a question, you will say out your name. You will also say out the media house that you are coming from. Then you ask your question. So far, I'm just seeing one end up. So we'll deal with that end. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Tafaz Wanyikazino. I'm a freelance journalist. Now, Professor, let us talk about issues in a more honest way. You said uh, since its inception, Pollard is working on a bill to uh, uh, amend electoral reforms. Fine. You also said that it is working to try and end uh, political polarization. So on point number one, why this late? Uh, Pollard has been around for a while now, and today you are talking about you wanting to come up with a bill to amend electoral reforms, considering that uh, we are almost one year away from elections. Isn't that too late uh, for you to be doing that? And then secondly, you said you are working on trying to uh, end political polarization, but we all know that political polarization is coming from two big parties in Zimbabwe, ZANU-PF and MDC. Parties which both of uh, polar principles which combine their numbers of followers, they will not even make a third if I'm only a fifth of the numbers that these two acrimonial, acrimonious parties have. So what are the odds of you succeeding in bringing Zimbabweans together with uh, such low numbers of followers that you have? Oh, okay, I think I should answer this second one very quickly. You are basing your analysis on 2018. But this is 2021. <laughs> you, you cannot say that. You can't say that what happened in 2018 is... There's no basis for that analysis. I mean, it doesn't matter whether you call it science or social science. You cannot rely on an event that happened on 30 July 2018. People voted the way you are talking about. But as we sit today, that is not the configuration in the country. And I want to challenge you to show that that is different. So by 2023, those people you see in Poland will Ghana if not the majority of the votes, close to a majority of the votes. I don't think that this debate of going back and saying, you know, you got 0, 0.00, you think I still have 0.01% of this figure at the moment? I mean, what, what sort of analysis is that? <laughs> so it happened in 2018, and I'm not going to allow a, a, a thing where I would have to disagree with you. The configuration of the electoral contest in 2018 
it came, it went. At this moment, call an election now. Call it. And let's see the configuration. I mean, I've seen people, I mean, like the party are saying the big bully. Which party are you referring to? Because the, no, 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 there's no no MDC. We used to have an MDC alliance. There's a party that is led by Douglas Monson. There's a party that is led by uh, Nelson Chambis. And which one? Are, you are, I think, from the questioning, you keep following that component. That oh, party has no you? MPs. I mean, they went to an election in 2018. As we speak, they have no MPs <laughs> at, at the moment. If you if you are to be honest, and you said you want an honest discussion, <laughs> just point to me which MP in parliament is Chamisa's MP. <laughs> Who? I mean, just uh, give me a name. You're only thinking Nelson Chamisa. I also talked about Zanu here. No, no, I'm going. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Uh, I think I gave you an opportunity to ask your question. Okay. If you are not satisfied, I will give you another chance. There are other people also want to ask questions. So I'll come back to you if you think that. But for now, I think you answered that no, question. Yes, an yeah, if you are not answered, answer. okay, let me answer. I think can, that. You can be. I'm sorry for the thing. I'm not focused. I wanted to deal with your argument that there are two big political parties and that. Uh, I'm just telling you that the electoral context of 2018 is gone. Why I'm not talking about Zanu, the purpose of the election was to produce a government and a parliament. So once the elections have gone, we know that the only result of that election, which is permanent, is the fact that we have a president who came out of it. But you cannot keep then focusing on the various, those are irrelevant, the various levels of opposition losing and so on. It's not a, but the only result of an election I hope I am correct on that point. The only value of an election is to tell you who the winner is. And when an election does that, it has done its purpose. And then the rest of your configuration, we disagree with you. And I want to challenge you as NCA, let's go to the next election. And we won't want to be judged by it. Then the issue about um, it has taken too long for us to, to get to the uh, electoral reforms and other things and so on. We agree. It's because Poland is not a walk in the park. There are those who think that Pollard is about receiving uh, what I think, whether it's, uh, some words I'm reading on social media, I don't know whether they're English words or not, that we are there to be receiving. That's not. Pollard is a place where you fight. We've lost a lot of battles within Pollard, but we still believe in Pollard. So it has been slow because government itself has not fully embraced it. It's taking slowly, at, but we know that we will succeed. Pollard involves fights. That's my answer to your question. Fine, so I think the answer is clear. There are, there are no good or bad losers. Losers are just losers. They must work with the, what? the winners, right? I will take uh, this set of questions. One, two, three. Then we just ask it. the president will then just answer all the three questions. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Brando Rosendorf. I'm a correspondent for the Voice of America. Uh, Professor, your critics argue that uh, you have been pampered with cars by uh, President Nangawa's government, yet uh, there are no medicines in what's this towns and uh, people are suffering out there. And they argue that you are enabling <coughs> the suffering of the masses because you, you have chosen to, to take these freebies, yet uh, there are no resources in hospitals, in the agency, education sector, and in other sectors. What would be your response to that? Well, thank you for that question. Uh, the next question, it was here. Uh, yes. <coughs> I just wanted to say to us to say that uh, how comfortable is the car considering that you use it off road as you've been uh, growing up your, your structures? All right, the next question <coughs> was here. <laughs> yes. yes, thank you, Professor. Uh, my name is Gibson, I'm a freelance journalist. I wanted to ask you about. Uh, the issue of Poland you receive with the car, isn't it you feel that uh, you have fizzled the momentum you had previously when you started the movement in 1998 and up to now you have fizzled out, you have lost the momentum, hence uh, you are embracing Poland and made the freebies as uh, explained by others as a way of acknowledging the realities that are happening in Zimbabwe's political space, that once in opposition, if you are co-opted, you sort of uh, endorse in the name of losers working with the winners. What's your response? Okay, so thanks for those three questions. Uh, the President can now respond. 
Okay, thank you very much. The question that says that uh, when we get a vehicle like the one that we're using, then we are taking away that vehicle from being an ambulance. That's the equation that you are, you are posing yes, yes. and so forth. I think everyone would agree with uh, me that uh, that kind of analysis is totally awkward in the sense that um, we accept that uh, things have not um, um, improved in some areas, like you still need hospitals to be fully, fully equipped and so forth. But that does not mean that uh, we will not be able to use vehicles or to get them without transport or we don't get to do anything else. I believe that uh, the, with the vehicles that we are getting, the vehicles are, as I said, using government vehicles to promote Pollard work and promote our work. Once we have that vehicle, you are likely to get more ambulances from the work that is coming from that vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other question, you're saying that uh, we are, uh, we, we have uh, lost the momentum and so forth. I think it is coming from a misunderstanding that these vehicles are coming from Zanupir. I think that's the misunderstanding. These are government vehicles that are being made available for a government program. And that government program is a dialogue program that encourages a particular thinking. And I don't think that, uh, I don't agree with the analysis that uh, we are phasing out. You're seeing me working more and I'm now having the philosophy that uh, we must create a country where we encourage each other, we find each other in between elections, let's work together and so forth. We are not saying support the government of the day. We are saying you work with the government of the day, but we don't have to support uh, the government initiative, but you work with them, you exchange ideas with them for the sake of, of the country. That's what we are saying. And that is not, I think it's, it's, if anything, it's an improvement of our politics. That's how I would say it. Then that the car is very comfortable for use uh, in the rural areas. You can see it outside. I think said you, we will. I, I, I think that's a question which shows, as I said, we will use it, the car, for that purpose. We will certainly use it. Right. Uh, we will take the last set of questions, if there are still any. The last set. I know also know that um, some of you want specific interviews. So even after the press conference, uh, the president will also be here for a while to give you specific uh, kind of interviews. I know some who want that kind of interaction. You will be here shortly, I think, for the next two or three minutes. Yeah. But uh, if you don't have any questions, I will give the president uh, just uh, to close before we end uh, the press. Yes, uh, in my closing, uh, I just want to thank you very much for giving us uh, access to the world and that uh, we will continue to use these platforms to put across our ideas, and that some of our ideas may not be accepted by other people, but it's important that people know what we think, so that they judge us on the basis of our ideas. If you believe that what I have been saying throughout was completely useless, then you judge me on the basis of that. That's the importance of uh, the kind of uh, interactions we are having. And I also want to explain that, um, unfortunately, sometimes it comes out as if we are an independent party, which is a standalone party. We will oppose ZANUPE and we will oppose other parties, which are not NCA. So when you see us criticizing other people, I'm just doing the journalists who thought I was that. We are going to be doing that because our space is not the same space as the other parties. There is no rule that says, look, you don't criticize each other. Because, I mean, we stand on our own. And this is what I hope you understand. And I'll continue to come and interact with you. Please feel free to keep engaging us and put across these ideas that we are coming up. And we expect people to judge us on the basis of what we are saying. Thank you very much. Right. That, this takes us to, to the end of uh, the press conference. Thank you, colleagues, for coming. Uh, we will we'll be here to take any other personal interviews that, that may be needed. Thank you for coming. This gets to the end. Thank you.